Chris Mitchell with the Institute for Local Self-Reliance in Austin at the Community Broadband Summit in 2016. Today, I'm talking with Dr. Robert Wack from the city of Westminster. Hi, Chris. How are you? And his service provider that's working with the city, uh, Elliot. Uh, tell us who you are. Yeah, I'm Elliot Noss with Ting. Right. And you are the city council president for the city. I am. All right. Tell us what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> so we're building a community-wide fiber to the premise network all throughout the city of Westminster. We started a couple years ago. We've got our first phase completed. We're uh, embarking on the construction for the second phase. After these two phases, we'll have about 2,500 locations uh, passed. And then Elliot, our partner here with Ting, is uh, rolling behind us and connecting people and providing service. And so can you just tell us briefly, where does the city end and where do you start, Elliot? Well, in the case of Westminster, uh, the city ends with the physical infrastructure and we start with the electronics to light it up. So really, it is a pure infrastructure play from their part and we're doing anything, everything on top of that infrastructure. And let me just step back for a second. Just tell us very briefly, what is Ting? Ting Internet is a, a relatively new uh, fiber to the home business, a lot like Google Fiber. It's an easier way for, you know, people will often play back to me, Google Fiber for smaller towns. Uh, we're in Charlottesville, Virginia, Westminster, Maryland. We've announced Holly Springs, North Carolina, and Sandpoint, Idaho. And so I'm, I'm very curious, um, Westminster, you have in, in many ways pioneered this model. Why did you decide to go down this road in terms of working with Ting rather than just doing it yourself? Well, there's a variety of reasons. One is we didn't have the internal capabilities, capacity, or political will to become an ISP ourselves, like the guys in Sandy, Oregon. You know, they, they, they do a great job, but they had the resources to do that, and we just weren't in a position to, to create that capability from scratch. But we wanted to do this, so we started looking around for alternatives, and as we kind of sliced and diced all the different models out there, it became clear that the infrastructure, the, the dark fiber outside plant infrastructure, uh, not the, the, the lit network infrastructure, was the most obvious piece of this for the municipality, for us to take on, finance, own, operate. Operate only in the sense that we do the maintenance. Uh, the true, true network operations are all our partner's responsibility. So, you know, we, as we crunched the numbers, built our financial models, it became clear that this was well within our capabilities based on other things we do already, our water and sewer service system, the roads. It, it's just an obvious fit for us. And so far, it's working beautifully. So at Ting, you have an opportunity of working with lots of different cities. Are you finding other cities want to do the same sort of approach that Westminster has pioneered? Well, the, the path that cities and towns take tends to be a long one. When they start, just about every city or town has some thought towards doing something like what Westminster and Ting are doing. Uh, most of them, many of them, uh, bump into some, some hard realities, and those realities are political, uh, economic, and kind of at an execution level. You know, Bob talked about uh, um, what they didn't or couldn't do when he was talking about Sandy, which I believe was its own utility, as was Chattanooga Lafayette. Um, uh, you know, for what I think is more important is what Westminster and what Bob could do. And they were, you know, through Bob and a couple others in town, you know, they had enough vision and understanding of why they wanted to do this. Uh, the, the, the town was uh, strong enough financially to be able to do this. And then they were able to take it on at an execution level. You know, and politically, I mean, there was an election right in the middle of this whole process. And, you know, you guys were successful again. And so, you know, that's, that, those are realities that every city and town have to deal with differently. One of the things that I hear a lot of people talking about is public-private partnerships. And I, I feel like there's, it's a term that's used to mean many different things. Uh, you were a champion for a partnership in which the city owned the asset underlying it. And um, if you could just tell us why that was so important to you, to own the physical fiber? Uh, sure. So at the most basic level, it's a, it's a sort of a basic economic thing of ownership equals control and control means leverage and in a, in a negotiation in a partnership if you don't have leverage going into it you're gonna get a crappy deal you know and it's not like we had this very adversarial 
thing. It wasn't. It was, a, it was uh, I think, probably uh, uh, the gold standard in terms of how these things could go because both of us came to the table with leverage. We came to the table with valuable things to offer, and we were very honest with each other and said, here's what I need, here's what I need, and we worked it out. You know. But if we had come to the table, like, so I, Elliot, and I, Elliot and I have never talked about this, but if we had come to the table and said, um, we don't have any fiber, and we really don't want to build any fiber, and what should we do? It would have been a very different conversation. But because we came to the table already with some fiber in hand that we had built, and we said very clearly and firmly, we are going to build all the fiber, it, it framed the discussion, right? And so, and, and I think we both got a really good deal out of this thing. And, and, but that's because we committed to owning the asset. And um, that's something that I think a lot of municipalities are still struggling with, you know. Um, we'll get there, but, uh, but it's gonna be a, a, a process. One of the things that, in reading your contract, that one of the co-founders of our institute, David Morris, loves, and this is, I, I didn't pick it out as being one of the most important things immediately, but he loves, is in your contract with Ting, it says, if someone calls a support line, a human being has to pick it up. <laughs> so I want you to tell me why that's in there. That's in there because they offered it. You know, they, they basically, that's one of the things they brought to the table when they put it on the table we said yes we want that you know because and that's was one of the key differentiators between ting and and the other respondents is these guys came right out and said customer service and that 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 stellar level of of customer service is is our key differentiator and we said yes that's we we, we want that and so they offered to put it in the contract and we said yes we'll take it so we didn't even have to ask for it they they offered it so why did you offer that? Why is that so important to you? Uh, we're going, I mean, whenever I'm going into any sort of uh, 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 agreement or partnership or arrangement, I really try and identify the things that I'm going to do anyway or, you know, that, that, that I'm very comfortable doing, you know, that the, that, the, that the partner will highly value. And similarly, you know, I like to look for things where on the other side, they're going to be doing anyway, or they can do very easily that are very important to me. So it was really just, you know, coming to that. And I, I think another part of it is, you know, we fundamentally believe that that's an important point of di differentiation, um, uh, uh, and more so going forward. I mean, we're in a very, you know, we're so early in the fiberization of North America. Um, we're putting some markers down. You know, if, if people want to come and play, you know, here's how you're going to have to play. I'm curious, a lot of cities, they have leadership that talks about how important this all is, but they're not willing to really put in the time or the effort to, and the investment that you have. How will you know in five years that this was worth the effort of going through? How is Westminster going to be different, or what are you looking for? In five years, given how things are going in Maryland and, and the Mid-Atlantic region, I suspect that we will still be the only community in the Mid-Atlantic region that will have a community-wide fiber gigabit net level service in, in, in the whole mid-Atlantic region. And that by itself will make it all worth it because we will be unique and we will be the place to go for any business that wants that level of service at the prices that, that Ting offers, which is an incredible value. Um, that's number one. Number two is we'll know when those companies start showing up and we start getting an influx of people coming specifically for that, then that will be proof that this was the right thing to do from an economic development perspective. And I, I think you already have an example of that, don't you? We've got a couple. Uh, so there was a company that, that moved their operation down from New York in part because of the prospect of the fiber network. They are now connected, getting service, they're a happy customer. Um, we have several other companies that came but didn't know that this was happening, but now that it's happening, they have already said this has transformed our operation. We are, you know, we're far more efficient. We've reduced our operating cost. Well, they've reduced their operating costs because this is all Ting doing it. This isn't the city. We just, you know, opened the door and these people walked through and took the service and they're, they're just ecstatic. And I cut you off. Were there other benefits you're looking to achieve? So, of? so you know, the, the the uniqueness in the Mid-Atlantic region, creating, bringing new people in, and then, the the the, the for me, the, the the promised land is creating new applications, getting out there on the bleeding edge, 
and being one of the places that's creating the new applications and services that will be delivered across these gigabit networks. And Elliot, I'm curious if you have any advice for cities, communities that want to be one of the next Westminsters. Yeah, I, I think for me the, 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 the most succinct soundbite is uh, sort of do more, talk less. I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, and some of my best friends are consultants and they'll see this. And, <laughs> but, you know, there's a, there's a lot, and, and frankly they share the same frustrations as me, you know, where they'll have in, in cities and towns a second and a third and a fourth gig. You know, it's 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 really about doing. Towns t towns and cities tend to have a real pride in. You know, we've authorized a consulting uh, investigation, as opposed to doing trials and and um, you know the uh, doing trials, doing specific things. Sorry. Yeah. You said second, third, and fourth gig. You mean a consultant is doing the management. same? You know, right. in they, the they same do not have city a gigabit, or town. They no, have right, multiple right. jobs doing That's feasibility right. studies in the right. same town, <laughs> over and over. Um, um, and, and, you know, I think the other thing is, you know, and uh, Bob's heard me say this before, I mean, you know, Westminster in particular is a function of an individual who had a vision and got up and did it. And, uh, you know, had to have those um, internal battles as well as the external ones. And so, uh, you know, there's a real, what, um, there's a call to leadership and a call to the clear rewards for it. And so, you know, uh, what do I want to say? Do more, talk less, and be brave. Great. Thank you both. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.